Live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Hi, Jeff Frick here. We are on the ground at the Cassandra Summit 2014 at the Western St. Francis in San Francisco, California. We're joined here by Matt File, uh, was it customers? Chief customer officer. Chief customer officer. You don't see that a lot, so that shows a customer focus, which we like to see. So, Matt, good to see you again, Cube alumni. Likewise. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Big event, a lot of people, a lot of good energy in the keynote. Why don't you give us a little update on uh, Cassandra Summit 2014? It's definitely big. You know, we, the first one of these was four years ago, and this is the fifth one. And we've got 2,300 people at this one with another 1,000 watching around the globe. So considering we started with 135 four years ago, it's a lot of traction for the Cassandra community. So this is interesting, the, this kind of concept of a distributed conference as well as a distributed database. So. Who came up with this idea? How's it being executed? What are those people all uh, doing in places like Toronto and New Jersey and Madrid? So who came up with this is a great question. I actually don't know who on our side had that idea, but it is really cool because we've always had a distributed community. So we've had people contributing and using Cassandra and then talking about it around the globe. So we figured rather than make everyone come to San Francisco, let's take the conference to them and really get more people, more bang for their buck. Talk a little bit about kind of the, the uh the dichotomy of running a, you know, a, a, a for-profit commercial company, but you're also really all about the open source and the foundation of the Cassandra and how that works and how you're able to execute kind of both halves of that cooling. So one of the really interesting things about an open source company is everyone's contributing to this project, right? We don't own it. No one owns core Cassandra. Everyone helps and makes that better. Some people use it and report their feedback. Other people use it and talk about it, right? We would not be here without Netflix and how vocal they've been about their usage of Cassandra throughout the years. DataSax has a really special place because for enterprises to consume software, there are things that they demand out of the software that the open source community doesn't always provide. DataSax fills that gap, so things whether it's with services or whether it's with software like security and operational software, uh, we can help those larger companies consume the power of Cassandra in the way that they're used to. So you don't run the community, you don't own the community, but clearly the community is really important and you want to support and foster and grow the community. So what are some of the things you guys are doing on that uh, on that front to really help foster and grow this, this, this community that helps you know, all, bo all boats rise. So we obviously do a lot with the event like this, which is the fifth one, but another area that we really help with is we've got a startup program. So DataStacks gives back to the community some of our proprietary software, and if you're a qualified startup, in other words, your business is getting started, we'll give you free software for free. And over 300 companies around the globe have now used that and signed up for it, and are taking advantage of this advanced software to make their businesses even better. Now that was the one that was in the keynote, right? The, the, the photograph uh, folks, were they? Orbius is a member of that program, and they've had a lot of success. And the fact that they're on the keynote shows how great that program has been. And then, when did they grow out of it? Uh, they haven't yet. They're actually still a member. <laughs> but I mean, in the program, when when do people become a real? Is it a funding level? Is it a revenue? Is it it's so many seats? It's a revenue seeds? and funding level. So whenever they surpass either two million in annual revenue or twenty million in capital raised, they graduate from the program. Okay, and, and you said how many are in that program now? Over three hundred. Three hundred, and have any of them graduated? So we Absolutely. can. Absolutely, uh, some have. Any uh, success stories you want to share of, of some of these people that are Stay growing up? Stay tuned to the startup page. We're okay. doing a lot with the marketing page. On the there. startup page. Excellent. So do you have any uh, keynotes going on that you're involved with today? I've got a lightning talk at the very end of the day. Uh, so Jonathan started the day and I'm closing it. And what's, uh, can you give us a little, uh, the, a little preview for The title is No Sequel. Too legit to quit. Too legit to quit. I like it. So good. So you've been involved in a while. It's exciting. What are we going to see uh, in Cassandra Summit 2015? What do you think it's going to be? I think we'll see even more people, including around the globe, and even more companies showing how much they've harnessed the technology to change the world. Yeah, because it seems like it seems like a couple years back that there was a new uh, NoSQL database popping up every day, and now it seems like it's it's starting to consolidate down a little bit. There's been a definite consolidation, and you know, with DataSax's last round of 106 million you're really seeing some traction occur. Yeah, it's a nice round, it's a nice war chest. So Matt, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you'll get busy spending some of that money supporting all these startups that'll grow up. And the Orpheus thing was really cool. I like that uh, software, basically auto-tagging photos and um, 
and video with a lot more than just simple tags, but really uh, some, some interesting heavy science going into whether you're smiling or laughing or frowning or a whole bunch of fun stuff. So thanks again. I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground at Cassandra Summit 2014 in San Francisco, California.